Want to help the channel? Go to shopclownfish.com where you can check out official Clownfish TV merchandise and our brand new shop. It helps us out. Also, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash clownfish TV for more art and gaming live streams that we don't do on YouTube. We want to see you over there as well. Now let's get into the video. Hey guys, it's Neon. This is Clownfish TV. Welcome back. We're going to talk about the comic book industry. I'm going to do kind of a just a general video talking about comics and how the comic book industry seems to be eating itself alive in these uh, final days. The comic book industry, the direct market. I want to clarify, we're, we're talking about the direct market, uh, direct comic book sales, you know, through Diamond or whatever these new distributors are to comic book shops. Uh, monthly books predominantly. So when I'm talking the mainstream comic book industry, uh, that's what I'm talking about. And it's in steep decline, obviously, because a lot of shops are closed. Right now, the sales are not good. Uh, the future of a lot of these publishers and a lot of creators are up in the air. And what usually happens during these trying times is that people turn on each other. Uh, they do. They eat each other. And we've got uh, Diamond and comic shops are fighting. We've got the comic book industry turning on some of its own, uh, outing some of its own as being creepy. Uh, we've got all kinds of crazy stuff going on in comics. And if you're working in the mainstream comic book industry, the direct market at this point, uh, I, I would tell you to just walk away. I would get out while you can. Uh, I think it's going to implode and it's not going to be pretty. I would find something else to do. We'll talk about what the actual future of comics is probably going to look like. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. What actually kicked this off was an article from a couple of days ago talking about how comic stores and Diamond are clashing as the industry reopens. Um, they are having a lot of problems with shipping. And uh, the distribution company des denies complaints. It's intentionally charging more during a time retailers are getting back on their feet. Our base shipping rates have not changed, but the landscape in which we are all operating has. Uh, so post reopening from coronavirus directed shutdown, Diamond has been charging customers increased shipping rates for products eating into comic book retailers' profits at the same time as it runs a promotional campaign intended to raise funds for those same retailers, The Hollywood Reporter has learned. Yeah, you know, back the comeback? Yeah, a lot of these shops aren't coming back. Uh, retailers tell The Hollywood Reporter payments to Diamond in recent weeks have increased, in part because of a relatively new policy that sees orders divided up into more shipments, meaning more charges. That's not the only concern retailers have. Uh, I was paying roughly 6% of wholesale on shipping from Diamond pre-pandemic. This is raised up to approximately 10%, and we've had single weeks rise as high as 25%, says Brian Hibbs, owner of Comics Experience in San Francisco. Uh, we're going to talk about Brian Hibbs in Tilting at Windmills and Comics Beat and, and all of that. Uh, Diamond denied it was intentionally increasing shipping costs. Uh, with Chris Powell, Chief Relationship Officer of Jeppy Family Enterprises, shifting the blame to publishers in an email to The Hollywood Reporter. So they said, as they approach a more normal capacity, shipment sizes will increase and the freight as a percentage of the shipment's value will go back down. Some discounts from the various shippers are passed along to retailers, but are also based on specific weight thresholds. Some retailers are missing those thresholds now, but we hope to exceed them. They also talk about DC's recent changes. DC that uh, cut out on Diamond. They cut out on Diamond and they're using new distributors because they got to get that product out. If they don't get that product out, at and probably going to shut them down. And then they keep talking about Brian Hibbs, Brian Hibbs, Brian Hibbs. So now we get into opinion. Uh, this is uh, Graham McMillan at The Hollywood Reporter. Now we get into opinion. Diamond is unrepentant about the increased financial burden on comic stores at this time, judging by Powell's response to The Hollywood Reporter. In most of the cases we've researched so far, the cost increase was caused by the factors I outlined above, so we have not issued freight credits. Uh, we have always done so when we identify an error on our part, but in most cases, it's simply the economics of shipping the goods. Well, shipping has gone up. 
ask anyone who's done crowdfunding. Shipping has has gone up. Uh, when you have to ship things in more boxes, it goes up. When you're not shipping as much, it goes up. Uh, if you got to ship 20 smaller boxes versus four bigger boxes, you're probably going to pay more. That's just kind of how it works. And it's getting to the point where the margins were so thin with comic book shops that you know a lot of shops have to, are probably going to have to ask a, a, themselves a really tough question when they come back. Like, is it even worth it? You know, is it worth it? Because at this point, consumers can just buy directly from the publisher, directly from the artist, directly from Amazon. You know, it, it's, it's going to be tough. Um, but the comic book industry now, most of the news that's cracking news outlets outside of the, you know, the, the normal comic book news outlets, most of it's bad news. Like, it's almost like it's almost like the rest of the world is kind of rooting for comics to fail. Uh, they didn't pay much attention to comics unless it was tied into movies. But now everybody's kind of rooting for the comic book industry to fail in some some weird way. Uh, so this is uh, coming from Fandom Wire, talking about comics dying. Does it signal the end of superheroes? No, I don't think so. I think they'll change. We're talking about how the North American comic sales have, have mostly flatlined. And talking about graphic novels, which I'm going to I'm going to talk about that because that's actually uh, very important. But we get all the way to the end. Despite launching multiple original comic book issues and arcs, only a few of them managed to survive the new age comic book readers expectations. A few random and infrequent successes like DC's Dark Knight's Metal and Doomsday Clock and Marvel's X-Men relaunch is not going to change the inevitable. I actually happen to, to agree. Uh, dark days lie ahead for your favorite superheroes. Enjoy it while it lasts, folks. Enjoy it while it lasts. It's it's over. Um, yeah, I think the comic book industry as we knew it is over. But uh, I'm going to talk about graphic novels. Before I do that, though, I want to talk about all this weirdness going on in comics. So as the comic book industry is in panic mode, it seems like everybody's throwing everybody else under the wheels of the bus. Uh, the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund uh, tossed a couple people under the wheels of the bus. Three directors exited amid industry pressure. Yeah, there is a, uh, uh, which we haven't talked about too much, but there is a purge going on in the comic book industry of problematic people, of uh, potentially skeezy people. Some of them are legit skeezy. Some of them are not so skeezy, but there are rumors. And comics is sort of throwing everybody overboard. And you've got creators dogpiling on other creators and editors. And, uh, you know, Sean Gordon Murphy seems to be a punching bag for everybody at this point. There's nothing this guy can do that's right. He hasn't been accused of, you know, that so much as he has uh, just using his or misusing his uh his position in the industry you know and he does an indiegogo and you can't do that and he he because he didn't use kickstarter and it's like god you know seriously I'd, I'd probably just walk away from the industry entirely at that point i'd just be like you know fuck all you guys i'm gonna go work i'm gonna go work uh drawing cars or something something uh, that pays better you know but uh yeah so paul levitz Catherine keller and jeff abram all departed following the resignation of Charles Brownstein over abuse allegations. Now, the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is incredibly disappointing. I remember what it was like back in the day where they protected free speech and they would give legal aid to, uh, to that end, free speech. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund 15, 20 years ago would have actually backed your boy Zach's legal campaign, in my opinion. They would have said he has a right to work in the industry, regardless of whether or not you agree with his hot takes, and they probably would have supported him. But now they're a mere shadow of what they used to be. They're nothing uh, compared to what they used to be, and, and they're a sham. But uh, yeah, Charles Brownstein, he left. He left because uh, he apparently, allegedly, assaulted a creator in 2005. But why is everybody else leaving? I think it's because they potentially knew. I don't know. But it's, it, look, comics eating itself. Warren Ellis, who everybody looked up to for a number of years. Again, similar accusations. Again, people who worked in and around Warren Ellis, who maybe benefited from his forums. They threw him under the wheels of the bus. I don't know if he cares so much. He's kind of doing the Hollywood thing now. 
But yeah, all these comics creators are just, I mean, spending all day on Twitter, all day on Twitter, turning on each other. Uh, and I think it's just a sign of the times. I think, I think, you know, granted, there are some legit allegations, obviously. Uh, you know, there are some people who are legitimately creepy and abusive in the comic book industry, but there are also a lot of uh, bored, scared creators who have been on lockdown for months, who maybe weren't uh, in a very good uh, uh, place before this, and now they're looking at uh, potential uh, d the potential destruction of their careers, and they're just angry. And and you know, the torches and pitchforks, man, they're coming out. And it's going to be interesting to see where comics is a year from now. Who's going to be left standing? Uh, I don't know. But I got to give a hat tip to Bweezy Bird, who let me know that Brian Hibbs has his uh, comic book graphic novel sales chart up on Comics Beat. Now, he does this every year. And he does sort of a rundown of all the graphic novel sales. And, you know, if, if we couldn't make it clear that manga and graphic novels are kind of where things are going for the general public. Um, these lists do, because you can see that apparently, 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 graphic novel sales are up. They're up considerably. Uh, could be because of the lockdown. I don't know. But a lot of the sales are, you know, obviously scholastic books, but also manga. And uh, you can see that in 2019, supposedly, there were 24 million copies of graphic novels. Most of them Dogman. A lot of them Dogman. But you can see the numbers. Like, this is the top 20. My Hero Academia broke the top 20 at 98,000 copies. Uh, but look at the numbers here. Like, you know, now this is for the year. But, you know, 135,000 copies, 113,000 copies. My Hero Academia, just volume one, 98,000 copies. Dogman. A million copies year to date. But even compare that to the Japanese manga sales where we were talking yesterday about Demon Slayer topping 60 million copies and everything that's being done here in America is, is sad. But this is considerably better. Considerably better than what the direct market is doing right now. Uh, but, you know, to me, the graphic novel scene always reminded me of, of sports where not you're going to have a couple of Michael Jordans you know, but not everybody's going to be a superstar. You know, for every book that's selling 200, 300,000 copies, you've got a bunch that are selling, you know, two or 3,000 copies or 200 or 300 copies, you know, so you're not really making much money. But it does show that, you know, there is a demand for comics, uh, for manga. It's just that the direct market is pretty much done. Now, you know, juxtapose this supposed boom in graphic novel sales to Barnes & Noble laying off the guy who, who buys the books you know I, I don't understand this grab you know barnes and noble laid off their graphic novel buyer and they got rid of a lot of their specialty buyers uh so this was this was uh sad you know 20 years he was doing it for 20 years uh but they're not doing so hot barnes and noble isn't doing very hot and a lot of these sales are coming through walmart and through amazon um you know it's gonna be really interesting to see where the comic book industry is uh, where comics as an art form is in a year from now, I think crowdfunding for a lot of people is going to be where it's at. Uh, obviously, you know, if you can, can get a book deal and sell a couple hundred thousand copies of a graphic novel, good for you. But for most people, I think uh, crowdfunding is going to be where it's at because there's not going to be much of a direct market left. There are going to be way fewer jobs and they're probably going to pay way less, you know, so buckle up guys all right i'm gonna wrap this up please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants and hopefully geeky will be back soon she's not feeling too good today don't worry it's not covid or anything like that uh she just needs a day off we'll talk later hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community go to clownfishtalk.com that's clownfishtalk.com Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.